and Mr. Bowman here. We're looking at the 2015 probability methods exam. We're focusing on the achieved questions in this video. Keep an eye out on the merit and excellence questions that will come out in subsequent videos as well. So we're starting off with question 12 from the website. So if you're working from that, we're up to question 12. Um, the waiting time for patients attending medical services to see a doctor is approximately normal distributed. Again, can't emphasize enough, that's the phrase to keep an eye out for. That's your big giveaway, it's normal distribution. It's got a mean of 35 and a standard deviation of eight. What's the probability that a patient will have to wait between 34 and 40 minutes? So as always for this type of question, I've got to draw my graph. It just helps me avoid little mistakes. I've got a mean of 34 down here, and I've got a standard deviation of 8. I'm interested in the range between 34 and 40. And once I've got that diagram, I can start thinking about my calculator and what my inputs are going to be. So I've got to start off with my lower, which is going to be 34. My upper, which will be that 40. The standard deviation will be 8, and the mean will be 34 as well. So just to note, the mean or the lower and the mean are the same in this question. That's sometimes the case, sometimes not the case. So keep an eye out for that. Don't expect it to always be the same. We've now got to figure out what's the probability. We plug all of those into that distributions function of our calculator, and I'm getting 0 0.2734, and I've rounded that to my usual 4DP. So we're now looking at question number 13 at reception. So carrying on with our kind of medical theme, um, patients are assessed on the urgency of their condition, and this is normally done within two minutes of arrival. Um, it's thought that the waiting time is approximately normal distributed, normally distributed. Again, bang, got to think normal distribution, a mean of 60 and a standard deviation of 20. What's the probability or what proportion would be assessed within 90 seconds. Um, so draw our normal distribution curve, always our first step for these questions. We had a mean of 60 from the question and a standard deviation of 20. We've been asked about within 90 seconds, so we do have to think a little bit, what does that actually mean? Is it more than 90 seconds or less than 90 seconds? And within 90 seconds will probably mean anyone seen either straight away or up to 90 seconds, anyone after 90 seconds I'm not interested in. So I'm going to write 90, and it's this whole portion here that I'm actually interested in. And because I'm dealing with that tail, I've got to think of my nines, and it's on the lower side, so I'm dealing with negative 9999. So I've put all the information from the question into my diagram. I've now got to think, well, what's my calculator inputs going to be? So my lower is going to be that negative four nines. My upper is going to be the 90. My mean, or my sorry, my standard deviation first, that's 20, and my mean equal to 60. I plug that into my calculator, and that'll tell me the probability that a patient is being seen within 90 seconds of arrival, 0 0.9332, and that had my 4DP rounding. Now looking at question number 14 on the website, a survey is carried out out of 80 patients who arrive at reception, patients selected on a random particular day, and here's a histogram of those results. Um, what proportion of patients were assessed within 90 seconds again? So we're trying to find, well, what's the probability that it is less than 90 seconds? And for this type of information, when you're dealing with a graph, some tables, some other form of statistics, you're dealing with F over T normally. And our total, that's nice and easy, there's 80 patients in total. And of those 80 patients, how many were seen within 90 seconds? And this is where we look at our graph. So the 90 seconds over here, anything less than 90 seconds would be all the bars to the left of that. So this first bar here, how many were seen in that group? That relates to five people. Then we've got 11 people. Hopefully I'm getting the numbers right. Then we've got eight people over here, 17 up here, and then finally the biggest group, 19 people up the top. So all of those people were seen within 19 seconds. We don't care about these other two groups. So that there are our favorable outcomes. So that F, so we're going to 
up the top there, we're going to go 5 plus 11 plus 8 plus 17 plus 19. We now add that all up. The 11 and the 19 come to 30, 35, 43, and then 60. So that there is going to be 60 over 80, and you convert that to a decimal, 0 0.75. So roughly 75% of patients will be seen within 90 seconds on that random given day that they took all the data from. Okay, we are now on question number 15 from the website. There's a few subparts to this question, but we'll get through them. Um, the noticeable thing is the table, which tells me I'm thinking two-way table. I'm probably going to be using f over t quite a bit. But let's have a look. So a study is conducted of 1,500 candidates. So that makes sense because that grand total was 1,500 down there. Um, for an international examination to investigate whether year 12 candidates were as successful as year 13 students. Um, the results are summarized at the table. Our first question, what proportion of students passed that exam? So we're trying to find the probability of passing. And just a reminder, f over t is how I like to approach these questions. There were 1,500 students in total. Of those, 1,200 passed, which means that proportion would be 0.8. So we're now moving on to ii. That was a nice, easy one. Um, what proportion of candidates who failed the exam so this time around, we're not looking at all of the candidates. We're only looking at the candidates who failed the exam. What proportion of those were year 12? So we're trying to find what's the probability that they were year 12 given they failed that exam. So again, I'm th thinking F over T. My total relates to the people I care about. In this case, only the people who failed, which is 300. That's our denominator. And of those 300, how many of them were from year 12? That was 33. And we plug that into a calculator. We're going to get 0 0.11. So about 11% of the people who failed were from year 12. And the final question, there were 52,500 candidates who sat this exam. From or based on the results of the study, how many candidates would you expect to be from year 13 and past the exam? So this is an expected value. So I love seeing that word expected because straight away I'm thinking it's expected value. Before I do that, I need to find the probability of the thing I'm caring about. And that there is, I need to find probability of year 13s and passing. So that's going to be F over T. There were 1,500 people in total. Of those 1,500, there were 853 of them who were year 13 and passed. So I'm looking for both of those criteria. And I plug that into my graphics calculator, and I'm going to get 0 Eight, seven, nearly running out of room there, but not quite. And that was my 4DP rounding. I can now get into the expected value part. So the expected value is equal to N times P. That's going to be 52,500. That was the number of candidates in total. And that there is going to be multiplied by the probability of the thing we're looking for. In this case, year 13 to passed. 0 0.5687. And this time around, I'm getting to 29,856.75. So just a note, this number here is going to be impacted by the rounding from here. So if you're one or two students off due to rounding, there's no issue at all. You would have got your marks anyway. Um, but it is important. Don't leave it as a decimal because you can't have half a student. So what I would have said, I would have said about 2,980 there you go, sorry, 29,895 or 29,857 students would have been that year 13 and passing. So notice I went to either side of the rounding. I passed it and minus it a little bit. Question number 16, our final lot of achieved questions from that 2015 exam. And 
This one's about a beef herd or some calves. And decisions are made after one month and three months as to whether or not they're going to be kept or sold. 55% um, are males, which means the rest are females. At the one month stage, 70% of males and 20% of females are sold. At the three month stage, so there was one month, now in three months, 80% males sold, 35% females sold. So there's a couple of different ways we could have approached this question. We could have done a tree, which would have been male, female, and then that there would have been the one month, and then you would have had to have the three month coming off. But all of a sudden we've got three layers on that tree, and I think that would be uh, complicated um, for this particular question. So I'm going to be using the multiplication type method um, for this question. Um, so the first one is we're trying to find the probability that there'll be a male and sold at the one month stage. So that's what we're thinking about. So we're trying to find the probability of male and sold at one month. So for that event to happen, so thinking of our multiplications, we need to break this down into the separate parts of this. So we need to go the probability of male times the probability of sold at one month. We then go to the question, what's the probability of it being a male? That's the 0 0.55. And we're going to times by the probability of sold at one month. That's that 0 0.7 there. We get into our calculator, plug that in, 0.385% of the herd will be males that are sold at that one month mark. So we're now moving on to question two. Find the probability that a randomly chosen calf will be female and sold at the three month stage. So this question's a bit trickier because you might do the same approach here, except you might change that to female and that to three months, but there's a bit of a trick here. So we're trying to find the probability of female and sold at three months. So it sounds like there's two events happening, but there's actually three events happening. So for it to be sold at the third month, it had to have not been sold at the first month. So that's our third part. So we need to go with the probability of it being a female times the probability of not sold at the first month times the probability of sold at the third month. So very tricky question. That middle part there was a bit hard to pick up. I mean, you have to really understand and think about the context to get that one. So the probability of a female, so we know 55% male, which means the other 45% or 0.45 are female. We know that 20% of female calves are sold at the one month mark, which means the other 80% or 0.8 are not sold. And finally, that three month one, we know that 35% of male or females are sold at the three month mark. So that's going to be 0.35. We plug that into our calculator, we're going to get 0 0.126. So that wraps up the achieved questions for the 2015 exam. Hopefully you found them useful. Keep an eye out for the Merit and Excellence videos. Um, now let's get into heaps of more practice and revision.